That's right. And we've been talking about food all week. So we're getting into how our favorite foods, our relish recipes, and some cooking catastrophes make for great TV. So with no further ado, let's get into our very first question, and which was from Friday of last week. Well, if you could only eat the same three meals for the rest of your life, what is for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Now, could all of my meals be dessert? Is that the I way this goes? So. Yeah. I think so. All right, because I don't eat. eat breakfast foods for breakfast. I'm more likely to eat like a dinner food for breakfast. So why not have dessert? Uh, I think Did I just you... don't love the food. You don't like eggs. Mm -mm. And you grew up on a farm. Is that correct? That is correct. That I am that's why I don't like eggs. <laughs> that is why you're so skinny. <laughs> But I have a feeling that some of the fans may disagree with me. What do you think? I don't know. Let's find out. So the first one for breakfast, it would be chicken and waffles. Yes, I like chicken and waffles. Second lunch would be Taco Bell's Grande Nacho, like the extra large nacho. And then a sushi boat for dinner all day, every day. Sushi. Let's go. Let's make. That's awesome. It's hard not to love sushi. Yeah. And chicken and waffles with hot honey oh, is the absolute best. So, you know, I've never had chicken and waffles. Is it good? It's amazing. Yeah. If I had to eat the same three meals for the rest of my life, it would be peanut butter and toast, Senegal shrimp, which is a Filipino dish, and rice. I could do rice a lot, too. Rice, it, rice is not a meal. It's, it's like having a loaf of bread for a meal. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If I can only eat the same meals for the rest of my life, I would have Eggs Benedict for breakfast. I would have a pizza for lunch and dinner. I would probably have a mystery meal of some sort. Yeah, how would you fill in the blank on that one? That is very, very interesting. Eggs Benedict, then pizza, then it's got to be a salad, right? It's got to be something fresh. Uh, so you say. I, that's what I say. I also know somebody who got violently ill food poisoning-wise from Eggs Benedict. And so another reason to hate eggs, but especially underdone eggs, I just can't. Ugh. Yeah. Don't eat raw eggs. That's mm -mm. a lesson. Okay. So breakfast would be chicken waffles. Because it's so versatile. Lunch would probably be something healthier, like a salad with chicken in it. But it had to be like orange chicken or something fancy. And then for dinner, easy wings and fries. Another chicken and waffles, man. I'm just saying that everything in her menu was orange. Every last item. Oh, yeah, that's so she wants She wants to be color coordinated with her headband <laughs> and everything that's in front of her on the plate. <laughs> So as you can see, I love food. My three favorite meals that I would choose if I had to eat the same three meals every day for the rest of my life would be pizza, mac and cheese, and chicken fingers. Pizza, mac and cheese, and chicken fingers. She lost me at chicken fingers, but um, the pizza and the mac and cheese for sure. So chicken fingers did not exist when we were kids, at least when I was a kid. You're much younger. Than right. Me. When right. I was a kid, there were no such thing as chicken fingers. And if, as far as I was concerned, like the inventor of the chicken finger should get a Nobel Prize. I love them. They're, they're handy. You can dip them in things. But yeah. where, you, where you live, do you call them chicken fingers or do you call them chicken nuggets? Ooh. Uh, I think we call them nuggets, I think. I, I think we do here, too. But a lot of people say fingers. We moved around a lot. I was kind of one step ahead of the law. If I could only have three meals, I think I would choose cereal. And I hope that means any type of cereal because I love almost all of them. Uh, BLTs, the perfect lunch food. And lastly, I think I would have to go burgers for dinner. Those would be my three. Burger's good, too, because you can deconstruct that and then pretend it's steak. Or you could put an egg on it and pretend it's breakfast. Then I would be totally <laughs> cool with that. Well, we have heard everybody's answers. And so now it's time for us all to vote. So uh, for those of you who are new, just go ahead into the chat. 
and type vote space and whoever it is that you agree with. And, and, you know, I see a lot of familiar faces in the chat today, so I know you guys know how to do it. And some of you guys are probably even using the shortcut of typing just, you know, V because it's cool. Uh, yeah, I do see a little technical error there, guys. I'm on it. After this vote, I didn't want to fix it in the middle of a thing. Uh, Ooh, let's find out what our waiting coming. is. Yeah. It's gonna be Kendra. Kendra, she's so well deserved. Yes, and she's from Phoenix, which is an awesome city. We give a little shout out to my Phoenix people in chat here. Are oh, there many? <laughs> I have never been to Phoenix, but what? I wonder: are they nuggets or are they fingers? That I think they're nuggets. But you grew up in LA. How could you have never gone over the border? Because uh, people in LA don't go anywhere. Occasionally they'll go to San Francisco or New York, but that, that's how we roll. Yeah, you're like, what's in Phoenix? Not the ocean. <laughs> okay, our next question up is, you can pick anyone living or dead to cook with for two hours. So who's it gonna be? And what are y'all making? So I gotta go with anyone who's funny. I'll take any comedian. I'll, to I'll to go cook with. What if yeah, you're really bad I wanna cook with? Like, What's his name? Adam Sanders? Oh, yeah. Adam Sandler. Adam great. Sandler. He's really funny, but I bet he can't cook. I bet he can't butter a piece of toast. Yeah. Okay. You make a point there. Because you'd be doing all the work as usual. Is that really yeah, what so, you want? Yeah. You're Do right. Do you know who I would choose? Who? Me. You. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> never cook together. No. Nobody. How much fun would that be? You are a pie expert pie maker and i'm an expert pizza pie maker so i don't know why we haven't joined forces here at some point what a fabulous meal we need a, a salad maker if anybody is a salad maker let us know and we can complete that meal that's what trish and i would have but let's find out what you guys would have so i would choose gordon ramsay because he's from scotland like i am and oh. it would definitely be a steak and french fries it's got to be that stick don't eat some call it. I was going to say, wouldn't you guys say steak and chips where you're from? They're beaten. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But And by the way, do they, they probably don't eat a lot of cows. I know they've got those long, hairy cows in Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Yeah, but I don't think they eat them. They I eat think haggis. They're, yeah, well, yeah, occasionally. But that's sheep's stomach. I've seen the Highlander, as you probably know, and they talk a lot about eating haggis. I'd rather eat an um, I'll probably spend it with my grandma. She died of cancer. And, um, you know, I'll probably cook chicken noodle soup because I used to love eating that as a kid. So, yeah. I got to say that this is a lesson to us all. So first off, my heart goes out to you, Christopher. And, and I totally agree. There's so many relatives, people that I just love that I never got a chance to like really hang out with. And there's few things more intimate than hanging out in the kitchen. All I'm going to say is take advantage of the time that you have in front of you right now. Go and cook something with somebody, someone that you love. Just saying. I'm going to go with the chef from Ratatouille. Uh, I believe his name is Gustavo. Um, unfortunately, he passed away, uh, leaving only a son, Linguini. But, you know, I think his message, anyone can cook, is uh, really important. And I think he could show me a thing or two. I don't know if you're going to step in and say what I'm going to say. I've never Trish. seen the movie. Oh, you've never seen the movie either? This, you guys, this comes up again and again because she, she would seem to be the kind of person who loves movies and TV, but she's seen nothing. Anyway, it's a little movie called Ratatouille. Nobody's really seen it. It wasn't very popular. God. But the thing about it is that Quinn got the chef's name wrong. Oh. Quinn, you need to, you definitely need to spend a little bit of time in the kitchen with Gusto. Gusto. Okay. Him Gustavo. I don't know. I would Gustavo. absolutely choose my grandmother on my mom's side. She passed away over 10 years ago, but she probably cooks the best Indian food that I've ever had and i would love to spend that time with her only if it's orange <laughs> and of course probably is that's what she misses about she, she just can't get good orange food these days but yeah i also love indian food mm -hmm. uh and there's a new place opened up in town but you know not everybody in my family likes it as much as i do and so it's rare that i i get to have it but boy wouldn't it be nice if my grandma could make that
Yeah. That would be a perfect two hours, just making something really delicious with someone that you love. <laughs> a lot of crazy spices. Uh, so everybody in the chat, Trish, wants to know what is it that you do watch? Oh. <laughs> I'm, referring to <laughs> I'm really big into streaming services, and I'm actually really big into cooking shows, baking shows, those kind of... Um, down to the wire, uh, you know, time, timed uh, contestants mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I really like that stuff. British but baking? I, I'm sorry. British baking championship. Love British baking. Yes. Do you watch? Is it, is it cake? Is it cake? Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah, I guess not. Chopped. Chopped. Junior like chopped. chopped? Mm -hmm. I like that. Junior chopped. But I also like the historical stuff. I love The Crown, and I love like Downton Abbey and all that stuff. So that's what I watch. You probably like all the the scenes in the kitchen. So when my family came to the United States, uh, my grandma had previously had a very sheltered life, but when she came to America, she ended up having to basically start over. So if I could cook with anybody for two hours, it would be her. This is that story again. Got to take advantage of the times that you have right now. So we have a big holiday coming up. As you know, it, it's Easter. For me, it's Passover. And we get like 45 people together for that meal. And it, we cook all day. And it's the cooking for it. I know it's a big hassle. It's like eight hours. But it's my favorite part just because everybody gets together and pitches in. So I hear you, Matt. I would have to say I would really like Ina Garten. Um, I think we would make great cocktails together, and I think it would just be a lot of fun. She's hilarious, and I love her popped collars. She is hilarious, and Ina Garten also speaks about her husband a lot and her friends. She just seems like a really genuine person who cooks, like, really with love because she does it all for her friends and family. That's a great idea. So one of the things that uh, Christine mentioned was, or Christina mentioned was cocktails. Apparently she does good cocktails. Amazing. So my question is, if you're cooking with Ina Garden, what's your cocktail? Oh, whatever she comes up with, she does all of these crazy, she's like a mixologist. So Ooh. I'm going to let her take the lead on that one. Yeah, I'm just a mixed upologist. <laughs> So guys, it's time for us to vote. We got to pick one of these. There were so many good answers here. We heard about like a lot of people wanting to go back and be with like their grandmas and get their recipes and wisdom. We also heard like a couple of celebrities in there. Uh, you know, I think, you know what we didn't hear is people saying, I want to be with such and such like super famous chef and get all their secrets. Oh, we have Gordon Ramsay. Oh yeah, sorry. There was yep. that too. Just, but it's more for the Scottish connection, I believe. Ugh. Can't be for the company, right? Yeah. Christopher and hit. I just said it like the Sopranos. Christopher. Christopher. <laughs> I want to be cooking with Tony and Camilla. That's right. Christopher wanted to have make a meal with his uh, departed grandmother, and it was going to be chicken noodle soup because who makes better chicken noodle soup than a Mima? Yeah. Um, let us proceed to a poll for all you guys who are subscribers. You already got this in your inbox. And uh, let's see what you guys thought about this one. Who would you spend two hours cooking with? And what are you making? If you had to choose between these four votes, childhood snacks, luxury cuisine, cupcakes, ratatouille with Remy. Is Remy the right character? Remy is a character. Okay. And most uh, people said they wanted... Oh, a childhood favorite. I love that. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's what Christmas cookies are all about, right? Christmas cookies suck, generally speaking. But it's that that's the time when the kids and the parents get together and everybody's hands on in the kitchen and you're decorating and you're talking and sharing time together. So I can understand why our fans thought that would be the best answer for them. All right. Well, yeah. this was a super question. It is really at the heart of why we add Cooking week is cooking week or food week is sort of about the food and all the things that you love, but it's mostly about the love. Mm -hmm. We have another question coming up. We do indeed. We asked you fans, if you could choose your last meal on earth, what would you have to eat? Ooh, for my last meal, it would be a spread. It would have to be definitely sushi. Mm. Um, Definitely some of my mom's cooking, maybe baked CD, some pizza, 
Um, oh, I don't know what else. Oh, I would want everything. Chinese food. Yeah. And so, maybe a milkshake and an ice cream cake. Mm, tiramisu would have to be so I think Yeah, so I would be going out, leaving this realm with a tummy ache. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the thing about it is that that maybe she's really into something because maybe when you're going to the afterlife, it's a good time to carb a load. Maybe you're um, going to need that, right? It's going right. to take a lot of energy to cross the river and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Who knows? Right? So, yeah. Load up. Tiramisu and the pizza and sushi rice. Death row, my last meal, five guys. Boom. I want the big burger, extra cheese, mayo, pickles, freaking raw onions, green peppers, jalapeno peppers, and don't forget a little mustard on there. And I'm going to get the fries Cajun style with the sweet tea. That would be my death row meal. Beautiful. I lick my fingers after that juicy burger, too. <laughs> I, I'm just saying you're going to need two. That's all. <laughs> and the second one's going to hurt. And you're going to have to force it down. But, that, but you're going to want it. You're definitely going to want it. Oh, my God. Five guys. We got one round here. I haven't been... I haven't had like a burger out in a long time. Oh, I think Five Guys burgers are really good. I don't love their fries because they have the skin on them. And that's mm -hmm. like kind of polarizing for people. So I might join you in the Five Guys burger, but I got to hit McDonald's for the fries on the, yeah. on the way out. <laughs> and, where do you, and what do you think about their shakes versus the McDonald's shake? So I don't eat ice cream because I just don't like it. So okay. I don't do so, milkshakes. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So you don't eat eggs, and you don't eat dairy, and you grew up on a farm. No, I eat a lot of cheese and stuff. It's not like a lactose thing. It's that I just don't, I never liked ice cream. It's just too cold. Yes, it is very cold. It's one thing you can say about ice cream. Last meal I would eat would definitely be uh, probably like a Michelin star, 10 course meal, a really good meal. Maybe a uh, omakase, you know, sort of uh, sushi uh, course meal, multiple course meal. Uh, on the liberal, it would definitely be a cheesesteak, a uh, Philly cheesesteak. So we talked about this during the week because this one came up as one of the QOTD questions of the day, obviously. And I started to tell a story about how I got taken out to dinner by the New York Times like food critic. And it was just insane because I would I would just love that. I would love like a like a five star meal yeah. because, you know, I never really get those. And so you might as well have one on the way out the door. Hmm. But anyway. Uh, Easy choice. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and corn. Three of my favorite foods to eat all the time. And it's, and it's not even really that close. The only way it could be better is if I had steak as well. So steak, fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and corn on the cob. So you know who he's got to meet? Irvy. Because his meal... Oh. Before we snuck in the steak is just yellow. Right. He just, he wants to match the frame that's around his head right now. You know, he wants to be having a color coordinated meal. Yeah. Like you know that. what he wants? A yellow belly. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. I would just get a burger. I get a classic burger and tons of ranch. I am a ranch person like till death. I love it. I love ranch and if it's my last meal, I'd better have a gallon of Hidden Valley right next to the burger. So, so ranch dressing comes up a lot, you know, and it was really funny because this week my wife, like she gets a package delivered from Amazon and I cracked it open because I like to see what she's getting from Amazon. And I pop it open and you know what's in there is a box of ranch dressing powder. And I got a little concerned because any time that, that you get ranch dressing, I would prefer to have blue cheese dressing. Every Amazing. single time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Well, then that's it. It, it. Blue cheese dressing is the Matt Damon of dressings, right? It, it's better than any other dressing in any possible situation. You can take any role from wow. any actor and just insert Matt Damon in there, and it would be better. And I feel exactly the same way about blue cheese. Yeah. Yeah. If I were on death row, my last meal would be my mom's chicken cutlets because there's something like good old Italian chicken cutlets. 
and I would have to end it with some sort of dessert. Um, and it would be I. probably Kong ice cream by Zita's in New Providence. Oh, so that must be like a family run place yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a Jersey girl. I've actually heard of Zita's. It's not bad. They also have Christmas trees too, which is very convenient. Oh, really? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's really good ice cream. It's kind of like the soft, you know, I think that New Jersey goes unappreciated for the ice cream. I've been thinking about like, there's that one. And then there's Thomas Sweets It's like really good, but it tends to be very soft. And here's the best part, Trish. It's not that cold. Really? So, oh yeah. No, it's much warmer than other ice cream. Just kidding. Yeah, I should of course it's soft. cold. Ice cream's cold. Listen guys, it's time to vote. Choose your best answer for what would be like the last meal. If you had to pick your last meal, what would it be? You can vote in chat. One, Bella, she was going to carbo load with like everything. Uh, and then uh, Ill Options, he's going to go for like a big old Five Guys burger. And uh, Zach, he doesn't care. He just, well, he wants a burger, but mostly it's about the ranch dressing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Victoria, she is going to go with like a home cooked meal with some ice cream. And some toast. Well. Victoria, congratulations to the Jersey girl. Yeah, congratulations to her. Well, good news. There is a poll. So if for some reason y'all don't agree with Trish about ice cream's too darn cold, let's find <laughs> out what it is that you guys really liked. Mm. Well, what's it going to be, fans? Is it going to be comfort food, uh, cheese, meat, and bread? Don't know why it's called girl dinner, but I guess we'll call it that. Something new? to complete your bucket list or a meal out with friends and food. Mm. Maybe Ooh. somebody in chat can tell us why that is called girls dinner. Yeah. I have no idea. I mean, girl I'm dinner. not opposed to it. It sounds like a great girl dinner. It just, um, yeah, I don't know. Right. Uh, while we're waiting for that answer, and I think Amir is going to tell us all about, oh, Jen says it's because girls eat their feelings and Kodiak oh, yeah. is saying girl dinner was a TikTok trend. And I guess it's because carbs equals feelings. That's what Jen says. I get it. I get oh, it. awesome. Thank you guys. Fans always enlightening us. So here's our next question. It is. You've won a five minute grocery spree, guys. What aisle are you going to run to first? Yes. Is, is it just about cost or is it just about like the urge? Because if think, it's just about the urge, I know, I know you're going into the frozen. Food. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Because if you could just stock your house for free, like what, what do you love? What do you eat all the time? I tend to eat the same things over and over again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I should hit the freezer aisle. Maybe so. Yeah. Because uh, if you went to the produce where it like looks like you're going to save a lot of money there, of course, that's going to go bad. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know where Trish isn't going, guys? She's not going to the dairy aisle. She's not picking up those eggs. I'm going to go to the hostess aisle yeah. and I'm going to go to the frozen vegetable aisle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Like people were writing in that they want to go to the technology aisle. I, Where I shop, you cannot buy an iPhone. Well, you know what's interesting? If you asked me this question, if I lived in California, I would say the liquor aisle. Oh, yes. But I live in New York and they don't sell liquor in our grocery stores. So yeah, I would load up on, on uh, wine and liquor. Yet another vote for New Jersey. In New Jersey, they're not actually in the store the way that they are, but like every good grocery store has got like this little like concession. It's got its own register, you know, because we don't want to like break the rules, but like we find ways. <laughs> We find ways to make sure that you've got, you know, everything that you need for the successful meal, including a nice bottle of wine. Now, I'm not sure of the rules of this reward. If I won a five minute grocery spree, can I just like throw everything I want into my cart as fast as I can? Yes. Is it only one cart or can I have multiple carts? And if that's the case, I'll probably just run to the snack aisle and just run with my arm along the sides and throw everything in and then give a whole bunch of it away because there's no way I'm finishing all of that. Mm, but you know what? You have until the end of time. Those Twinkies ain't going bad. That's true. <laughs> I would go straight for the like organic health food section and I would just get a bunch of different types of peanut butter or like cashew butter, almond butter, all the butters. And I would get a lot of kombucha and coconut water and like grass fed, pasture raised, local beef and eggs 
just all the like local organic sustainably made food yeah so she needs her spree to be at whole foods is basically yeah that sounds very fancy but yeah you know the problem and and amira in the chat's talking about apples and bananas but the problem is those bananas are not going to last very long particularly the organic ones those go fast yeah but if you peel and freeze them you can make banana bread anytime oh yeah no we've got a freezer full of that this is an easy one. I would be heading right to the chip aisle. I have eaten so many chips over my lifetime. I can go down the aisle now and say I've probably ate every single one of them all the way down to the dill pickle and mustard flavored. So, yeah, um, they should probably pay for my funeral when I'm dead because I've eaten chips every single day. So, yeah, I would most definitely be burning my money up on some potato chips. What we need to do is to get a question, which is what's the best chip? Oh, absolutely. Sean's had them all. I never found a chip I liked. I don't like chips. I want to like a chip. How convenient, sure. right? When you're watching TV and that's crunchy noise and then we really good on eating. a sandwich, yeah. you know, but I haven't found it. Hmm. Oh, five yes. minute grocery spree. Mm -hmm. We're going to. We're going to fruits and vegetables, and then we're going to the snack aisle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Life is a balance. Yeah. You'd be surprised at how fast I can put stuff in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> I think the aisle I'd run to first is either going to be the art supplies aisle or the tech aisle. Probably more likely the tech aisle because that's more expensive. I mean, art supplies are also expensive, but... I feel like I could get a lot of stuff for whatever it be, art or gaming or writing or everything, and just not have to spend all that in the future. So I would you know love what? to do that. Why just why not just go to the Ferrari aisle? You know. <laughs> well, I was gonna say it's telling. She must do her grocery shopping at like a Walmart or a Target or something yeah. that that has those big sections. Interesting. Right. Starve to death, Hannah. Okay, you want a five-minute grocery spree. What aisle do you run to first? Um, oh, probably desserts, since I love desserts. But um, either desserts or fruits and vegetables. Um, so it kind of is like the opposite side of the spectrum. But I feel that like a lot of the like cut-up fruit is kind of expensive. So I would get a bunch of those. And then I just love like baked goods and like cupcakes and stuff. So I'd have to get a bunch of those. So yeah, one of those two aisles would definitely be first for me. She's taking the top and the bottom of the food pyramid. Nothing in between. I got, I got, I'm getting a lot of ideas. Yeah. But yeah, I want to wait and see. I want to see, I want to know who everybody votes for. And then I want to see the poll. And then I will make my final decision. Because <laughs> okay. listen, you know, there's only 30 aisles. <laughs> well, guys, it's time to vote. Is it going to be the chip aisle? Is it going to be the dessert aisle? If we're going to go maybe the organic aisle. That was V2, right? Mm -hmm. I thought the, like the produce stuff, and I, but I do like the splits. I like the ones where it's like, oh, I'm going to go get vitamins and hostess pies. I thought right. that was pretty fun. Yeah. Gosh, guys. Let's see. Last minute votes. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, so yeah, it's the blend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The blend is what people like. You she know, the nice that. thing about the poll, it's like, it's very binary. You got to pick one. Yeah. You don't get to pick two. That's right. So here you need to decide, do you want gadgets? Do you want right. veggies, snacks, or frozen goods? So this is up to you, fans. Yeah. It really depends. Well, like what time is it 2 a.m because then i'm going for snacks oh it's veggies it's the well the veggie i suppose people people want to be healthy i get it but you know um now that i have thought it through you know what nobody really said is like meat and fish yeah Can't i just take all that and freeze it i mean obviously it's not as good as when it was fresh but i wouldn't mind having like like half a cow in my freezer my deep freeze right bag of good? shrimp yeah yeah wouldn't get eggs though no no eggs wouldn't waste my money on that plus they're free they're like 
<laughs> you just go out back and grab one. Oh, uh, here comes the next question. If you were a TV contestant on the show Beat Bobby Flay, what family recipe could you win with? Bobby Flay is multi-talented. He is a, a makes excellent Italian food, great with pasta, grill master, um, and desserts. He's also he has a a very southwestern cooking flair to him. So he your recipe would have to be pretty good. Yeah, I I would be a little concerned about what I would do. I mean, I guess I'm well, you know me. It's gotta be pie. You gotta make a pie. Yeah. And not yeah, only do no I have to make way. a pie, but I actually have to get my wife to make the crust. How many years have you been baking pies? Uh like how old am I? No, like like 25 plus years, you yeah. know, I've been so making you're... pies. Yeah, I, I do a pretty good pie, but 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 my we've specialized as in many things like like we have domains like on the house for instance Nancy is responsible and like has authority over everything that happens from the outside paint mm -hmm. until the inside of the house right so everything that we do inside the house sorry, everything from the outside paint outside including the paint itself that's all me and so we're exactly the same way when it comes down to pie Nancy does crust and it is none of my business how that crust gets made. Whereas I am the filling and I also do the assembly of the custard pies. We specialize. Oh, custard pies. That's fancy. Custard pies. Yeah, pumpkin pie is a custard pie. Oh, gross. Pumpkin pie is gross. Oh, oh my God. You guys hearing this? Pecan all the way. See, now I know why you don't like ice cream, why you think it's too cold. It's because your your teeth are rotted out from eating pecan pie. <laughs> Okay, what family recipe would I win with? Okay, I would just actually throw my hands up and say, uh, I give up. I can't do this. Um, my mother was a horrible cook, and I've never really tried cooking. Yeah, she used to make the absolutely worst lemon chicken and this like baked fish. So uh, I'm just determined it's not my genes. Okay, he's conceding before the contest even starts. Yeah, don't give up, Bart. <laughs> As a caffeine addict, I would win with this one simple recipe with my coffee cup in hand as I'm saying this. I would put Rice Krispies in a bowl, the cereal, put it in a bowl and put coffee on top of it with a little bit of sugar. It's so good. If you haven't tried it, try it. And I guarantee that Bobby Flay would love it. It's a very sophisticated recipe. Obviously, you're a gastronomic. Seriously, she's kidding around, right? I, I don't think she is. So, I think she's serious. Rice Krispies, mm -hmm. coffee. Yes. Hot or cold? Hot. It's gotta be cold, right? I don't know. Cold coffee. Cold coffee. And sugar. sugar. Okay, you know what? I was about to criticize this, but you know, I am a kind of a person who likes to pride themselves on having an open mind. Maybe it's just awesome. Yeah. Gluten free, okay. dairy free. Sounds good. Yeah, it's practically a health food. I have no doubt that I would take Bobby Flay down in a chocolate cake with vanilla frosting throwdown. It sounds incredibly simple, but my secret is the family recipe is only for the frosting. You use the boxed devil's food chocolate cake, and then you focus all of your efforts on a vanilla frosting that uses so much powdered sugar, it should be illegal. Yeah. So that's her edge, simplicity. Yeah, but I, 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 do you know, so I, pies, of course, but occasionally I'm called upon to make a cake because I have a lot of kids and, and we have birthday parties. But so I hack the cakes. I, I actually start off with those cake mixes, but then like, like add a little something, something to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's actually. hard to beat a cake mix. Honestly, they're so good. Yeah, Betty Crocker Kitchen. Well, since I think in my professional opinion as a former line cook for almost a decade, I think Bobby Flay is actually pretty garbo. Um, I don't think it would take much to beat him. So I would say something as simple as my family's uh, mashed potato recipe would uh, probably bring him down because the boy probably can't even cook mashed potatoes. <laughs> he could have a point. Bobby Flay could just try to fancy things up to a point where they're just not recognizable anymore.
I think Bobby Flay knows how to make mashed potatoes. <laughs> I, I really do. And I think that they're probably spectacular. The only question is skins on, skins off. If I were a TV contestant on Beat Bobby Flay, what family recipe would you win with? Well, I'm the world's worst cook, but I can make a beautiful baked Alaska if you call that cooking and I can make a ginormous one. So I would definitely win with that because everyone would think it's absolutely delicious. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have to admit ignorance. Well. Uh, you probably don't know what baked Alaska is either. I had to look it up. Because it's got ice cream in it. Right? Yeah. I didn't realize it was even a dessert. I thought it, I was imagining crab legs for some reason. That, so that's not it? what it is, man. It's a dessert of some sort. It is. And it, it's on fire? Yeah. You you make meringue and put it on the outside and then you torch it to make the meringue look brown and beautiful. Ball of ice cream, meringue, and fire. Yeah. Yes, I'm in. Could be 100%. winning. percent Yeah. If I were a contestant on Beat Bobby Flay, I think that my family recipe that would definitely win is pasta. Um, <laughs> we don't really have a specific name for the pasta, but uh, it's always delicious. It's tomatoey and garlicky, um, spicy. It's so nice. And um, everyone I've made it for has loved it. So I think we would win with that. So I would love to like hang out with her and have her cook because she seems really funny. Yeah. I, I got a feeling that you'd just be choking it down. I, I hate to say that, Kaylee, because she's <laughs> such an adorable <laughs> accent. <laughs> but, you know, listen, you're not from a people who are famous for their food. You know? You're the mashed potato girl, we would think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty good. We should go to her and ask her for that. But I got to say that once it gets past What's the thing? Mashed potato pie? Oh, shepherd's pie. Shepherd's Once it gets past shepherd's pie, <laughs> I, 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 honestly, we'd have to go ask an English person. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Guys, it is time to vote. Baked Alaska, mashed potatoes, coffee and rice krispies. Man, you would hear snap, crackle, and pop and pop. <laughs> what would it be? What is your recipe that would just crush Bobby Flay? What the Well, number one's out, I think. He quit before the game started. He said he can't cook at all. Yeah. He said he wouldn't be able to make anything. Maybe you fans will feel sorry for him. No, it's Kaylee with her special pasta that's very yeah. tomato -y. All right. I stand corrected. <laughs> Congratulations. At least it wasn't Taylor. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Well, fans, what recipe of yours could beat Bobby Flay? Would it be a seafood recipe, a special pasta salad, simple French toast, or a nice soup? Ooh, I have some pretty good soups. I might win with a soup. French toast, you guys say. Oh, yeah. French toast is one of those things that, that could be made awesome. That starts yeah. out pretty simple. Yeah. Stuffed French toast. Have you ever had that? No. What do you stuff it with? So sometimes they do it with like fruit and like a mascarpone cheese. Yes. Yeah. Super. Yes. Ooh. I can't make it, but I can eat it. Like Bobby nobody's Flay's in big it. trouble with that. Well, our next question's up and we asked fans this week, what is a junk food that you just can't live without? Mm -hmm. Let so, me count the ways. So <laughs> you're a junk food person. I'm a junk food junkie. Yes. If it were like the end of days, like if the zombie apocalypse was coming and I was caught at work, I would be just fine with a vending machine. I would have no problems surviving whatsoever. Yeah, I I got to go back a ways, you know, uh, to do it. But there is something about junk food because it is kind of about childhood and it yeah. is super convenient. And let's face it, it's made with so much fat and sugar that it just makes you feel so good inside. Yeah. It's the American way. Yeah. We love our junk food. Okay. So listen, if you had to give up for the rest of your life, junk food or beer? Oh, gosh. That's like choosing between children. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha's choice. Oh, Trisha's choice. Oh, my gosh. Um, you want to think about it a little bit? No, I'd have to give up the junk food. All right. Okay. But you I don't want here, folks. The booze comes first. There are a numerous 
amounts of junk food that I enjoy that I like to keep around every now and then. However, hell of a good French onion dip is, oh, it's so good, man. Uh, have that with some ruffled chips. You, you just can't beat it. I'm, you know, I'm more of a savory man myself. Uh, and that just, that just hits right. Hell of a good is the best brand of French onion. So is that a North, Northeast thing? Is that? It must be. Um, I don't recall seeing it in Phoenix, but yeah, in New York, it's very popular and it is absolutely delicious. He's right. All right. Let's keep that one in mind. Funyuns, man. Can't live without Funyuns. I know they're probably, that might be the worst chip that you could eat. It might be the unhealthiest chip out there, but it's my favorite. And every time we go on a road trip, always get Funyuns. It's tradition now. Yeah. If Bunions could be fun, they would be Funyuns. <laughs> that's kind of what they taste like. And yet somehow it manages to be enjoyable. I have... They're barely a chip. <laughs> oh. Junk food that I can't live without would probably be chocolate. <laughs> mm. um, it's it's delicious. It's comforting. It just makes my day so much better. Honestly, if chocolate were to go away, i don't know what I would do with myself. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a class four drug. <laughs> so it's so addictive and so yummy. And and it makes you like it's it's changes your outlook on life when you're having good chocolate. And then when you don't have it, you start to like not feel so good. So tell me that that shouldn't be, you know, outlawed. Yeah. Shh. Okay, sorry. Keep in mind, when you're voting in November, you got to go for the guy who is not going to outlaw chocolate. <laughs> That's right. What is a junk food you just can't live without? Easy. Sour Patch Kids. Love them. They're sour and then they're sweet. If you go to the movies, they're great to eat with your popcorn. You just go from salty to sweet to sour. Mm. Sour Patch Kids. Easy. That, like that was a good answer. Yeah, the the snacks that you have at a movie, it's like a whole different category. Like that's not the junk food that I would go to for a road trip right. or at 2 a.m. after a night on the town, right? My yeah. my movie stuff is very, very specific. And I might do Sour Patch Kids for a movie, but I would never pick them up. Oh, yeah, I need a baked something. good. What's a junk food I can't live without? It's popcorn, 100%. Like normal popcorn, butter popcorn, um, caramel popcorn, whatever it may be. I feel like I'm always snacking on popcorn at some point. Anytime I watch a movie at home, I, I need to get popcorn. So I don't think I could live without that. <laughs> so Trish, you were making a point during the, uh, the announcement show that popcorn is a health food. Yeah. But the way that Hannah talks about it it's caramel popcorn, it's buttered popcorn. I, I think that this is like full on junk food. Yeah, again, we're Americans. We can just junk anything up, turn it into absolute trash. So yeah. The candy apple, need I go? <laughs> junk food craving would be anything uh, made by Reese's. So basically peanut butter and chocolate. Um, I love peanut butter and chocolate so much, I will buy like the big, king size uh, candy bars, chocolate candy bars, and just dip it in a tub of peanut butter. So anything, peanut butter, chocolate, ice cream, candy bars, whatever. Yeah. So you're saying, yeah, but I'm saying, I think he's disqualified. There's so many, so A, peanut butter, like makes everything into health food. That's one. And two, he's making it at home. Like oh. you don't say, oh, like that chocolate cake, that's junk food, right? Okay because it's wholesome because it was made with love. Oh, huh. interesting. Well, we'll let the fans decide on that one. I'm going to give them a pass because chocolate and it's kind of like the popcorn thing, right? If yeah. you leave the peanut butter alone, it's fine. But then you start, you know, mixing it in with all kinds of candy and sugary stuff, then it's bad. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, we have some big choices here, but it is all up to you. Let's vote. That is so weird. Yeah, it's going to be vote space and then the number uh, right there in the chat. And it's going to be like Bunions, Chocolate. Yeah, Chocolate's a good one. Votes. 
Congratulations, Katie Amore. You are going to make it to the finals today with your awesome answer. Chocolate. Chocolate is like. Oh, it was just chocolate. I was trying to remember what it was. It was just yeah. chocolate. Okay. Yeah, I like chocolate. And I'm like, okay, about to say, well, that's not junk food, but I'm just saying that because I like it. Yeah. <laughs> no, clearly the best answer. But we have a poll and we were wondering what your favorite junk food is. What's the one that you just can't live without? Is it fast food, potato chips, ice cream, or iced coffee? Yeah, with Rice Krispies. With, <laughs> with or without, they're optional. <laughs> yeah, this food's pretty, pretty oh, delicious too. We have a tie. Fast food and iced coffee. So two I guess that one trip to Duncan went <laughs> two ways. Yeah. Yeah, do you know McDonald's doesn't make uh, bad coffee? No, I, it's good. I like their iced coffee. Um, but I just have it black. In it's which too case, cold. Not junk food. But our next question is, what is something terrible that you ate just to be polite? Uh, I have so many. Watch what you say here. Oh, gosh. So many instances. Um, I think, though, probably it was uh, some sort of like goose liver pate thing mm. that a French chef had made and I felt compelled to try it. And it was really off, like really, really awful. I mean, I'm sure it was done beautifully. I'm sure technically it was a 10 out of 10, but I just don't like liver. And now I know I don't like anything associated with it. So that was mine. I, I, I definitely like that. It's like the king of savory liver stuff, especially chopped liver. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, and it, it'll put you right in the ground too. But but I, I gotta say that I was about to say funyuns, but it's gotta be something like that. Somebody's pushing some like yucky dip, you know, mm. with cheese whiz came right. in a can. And you're like, oh, <laughs> thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> Trish's mom. <laughs> stuff is nasty uh i mean i used to be just like oh yeah it was great blah, blah, blah. now i just uh, I'm not gonna do that. that's not gonna do it it's not great so his mom can't cook either i'm i'm with you elijah i get it tuna noodle casserole can be bomb though if somebody makes it the right way i like it making a little a little adjustment there what is something terrible you ate just to be polite? Well, I've got to say it was artichokes. Oh my goodness. I couldn't, I couldn't get them down. I, I literally, and it was dipping them in some, the leaves, dipping them in something. It was gruesome, gruesome. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure if I remember rightly, I, I think I almost sicked them up behind a plant pot. It was disgusting. Never again, ever. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I like artichoke, you know, I do too. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it gets served with like hot mayonnaise, something like that. Yeah. And I, I got to say, I'm like looking around, making sure my wife, yeah, I know she's not watching, but we go out like usually Sunday nights, you know, after pickleball and we like to go out for like a beer and have a snack. And she always orders this like hot artichoke dip and it's, it's like hot mayonnaise. Oh. And artichokes, it's like, oh. Yeah. The the oh. first time I ate artichokes, I didn't realize you were supposed to scrape the filling. Yeah. And I put the whole leaf in my mouth. Oh, and so it choked really Artie, and it, it almost choked Trisha. Yeah, it was yeah. really sharp, and it was really woody and really gross. And I put it into a napkin, and then somebody was like, did you just stick that whole thing in your mouth? <laughs> Yes, I did. Yeah. I have a funny story about the first time I had lobster like that. It's I remember like that. one year, my dad, who's an awful, awful cook, like literally so bad. I remember one year he made this mac and cheese that he like inexplicably took to our holiday. Like, why do you take old, crusty, horrible mac and cheese that you don't know how to make to a family holiday where you know that there are people better? I was one of the only ones that ate it. And it was disgusting, but I would do it again. You're a good son. Absolutely. I was going to say, that's just great. Uh, have you watched the show? The I'm asking this question, but it's ridiculous. People in the audience, have you seen the show, The Bear? And there's this really 
like classic, like red wedding type episode where they have a Christmas dinner and one of the, one of the brothers-in-law brings like a tuna casserole. It was hysterical. And it must've been just like that with you, Bartimus. You are a good guy. I was invited to dinner by this um, man in South Korea. It was me and a friend and he took us out to get this like really nice fish. Um, but the fish was brought out to us raw. And then there were like these, and I don't mind raw fish. I eat nigiri all the time, but this fish had tiny little bones in it. So every time you ate it, you had to pull the bones out and it, it w took everything in me to eat. Yeah. And, and do you think that he ordered this dish London to make fun of you? Cause he must've known, right? He's like, Oh, very special dish. You're going to love Here's it. Here's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much anytime someone makes a soup or a stew, I'm just not a soup stew kind of person. I associate it with being homesick. And if it's not chicken noodle, the odds that it has something I don't like in it are very good, like beans. And there's nowhere to hide. Like the bowl is full. You ha you can't just shove it around the plate. So it's it's basically like being cornered her face i know alexis grow up <laughs> are you are you the same way or are you okay with like soups and stews i love soups and stews yeah love them yeah i like it very homey yeah homemade sushi mm. homemade sushi i'm sorry sushi has to be prepared like a certain way in order for one to be edible and two you to not i don't know die or get food poisoning or be like super sick yeah but i ate gross bad sushi to be polite once oh i don't know if i could bring myself to eat homemade sushi me either. i just don't know if i could do it i'd be i'd be exactly like taylor man you are you are a good and courteous guest yeah because that's scary Whoa. Well, Taylor trying to redeem herself with a good story there. You vote for her, let's just say, as vote space six. Or maybe you feel like uh, artichokes. Or maybe you feel like um, uh, your dad's mac and cheese at a sumptuous, you know, gourmet family meal. I don't know. <laughs> I love how he said. And there were people there that were better. <laughs> let's just say. Oh man, let's see what everybody had to vote for. Oh, it was Barnabas. That makes sense to me. Speak of the devil. It's a great answer. It's a great story. You're a wonderful son and you ate the tuna noodle and you're a better man for it, Bartimus. Congratulations. Well, say. fans, we've got a poll for you here. We wanted to know something terrible that you ate just to be polite. Was it something expensive? Was it a raw? Ugh, scary food was it a uh, super spicy food or a food that was just made wrong hmm oh most of you uh, said it was all in the preparation where the food fail occurred you said a food that was not be my wow that was tough yeah. that was not made properly <laughs> so so uh going back to taylor's issue taylor's like like homemade sushi and i find that so terrifying right yeah yeah uh, are you familiar with beef tartare or tuna tartare. I, I am yeah. familiar with it. I've never had it. Yeah. So, so hear me out. It's raw beef with a raw egg. Oh no. You would have to like be trying to borrow money from somebody before oh. you would eat that side dish of ice cream. I am telling a, a raw egg and raw beef. Yeah. I, I can't honestly think of anything unless you had a gun to my cat's head that would make me eat that. <laughs> That is brutal. Uh, what is the next question? You know what? Is it? It's oh. time. So da -da -da. we have gone through all seven questions. And the way that this thing works is that it's a week, right? And the, how many days are there in a week? The answer is seven. And so starting on Friday, we do a question, and then Saturday's a question, Sunday's a question, and all those things. And you guys have been awesome. And just answering all these questions with some really, really creative answers and then voting and sending stars. And so our system will go and pick the six best from each one of those. And that's what we've been going through, right? Each one of those winners 
it was like our semifinalists, right? It's like a beauty pageant of your QOTD answers. And so now we have to have the final. This is like the, what is this? The talent or the bathing suit or the speech? I'm not sure, but the one that comes last, that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to go through the answers that you thought were best, and then it'll be time for the final vote, and we will pick our weekly QOTD campaign. Mm -hmm. Okay, you won a five-minute grocery spree. What aisle do you run to first? Um, probably desserts, since I love desserts, but um, either desserts or fruits and vegetables. Um, so it kind of is like the opposite side of the spectrum, but I feel that like a lot of the like cut up fruit is kind of expensive. So I would get a bunch of those. And then I just love like baked goods and like cupcakes and stuff. So I'd have to get a bunch of those. So yeah, one of those two aisles would definitely be first for me. All right. If you had a free shopping spree, we didn't even put a time limit on you. Spend as much time as you want. If you had a free shopping spree, what is it that you would get? You know, I was doing kind of a nice. If plan. I were on death row, my last meal would be my mom's chicken cutlets because there's something like good old Italian chicken cutlets. And I would have to end it with some sort of dessert. Um, and it would be probably Kong ice cream by Zita's in New Providence. Ice cream and chicken cutlets. I got to say, she is a Jersey girl. We, we do both <laughs> ice cream and then really, really, really good Italian food. So that was, what would your last meal be? If I had to eat the same three meals for the rest of my life, it would be peanut butter and toast, Cinnabon shrimp, which is a Filipino dish, and rice. Peanut butter and toast for breakfast. Well, that is her answer to the question of you could only eat three meals for the rest of your life. What would it be? She's going with that kind of some, some like home like stuff, stuff that she was raised with. I like that. If I were a contestant on Beat Bobby Flay, I think that my family recipe that would definitely win is pasta. Um, <laughs> we don't really have a specific name for the pasta. But uh, it's always delicious. It's tomatoey and garlicky, um, spicy. It's so nice. And um, everyone I've made it for has loved it. So I think we would win with that. And so Kaylee is answering the question, what is your family dish that would crush Bobby Flay on Beat Bobby Flay? She's going to get something with tomato and garlic. <laughs> I remember one year, Love it. my dad, who's an awful, awful cook, like literally so bad. I remember one year he made this mac and cheese that he like inexplicably took to our holiday. Like, why do you take old, crusty, horrible mac and cheese that you don't know how to make to a family holiday where you know that there are people better? I was one of the only ones that ate it, and it was disgusting, but I would do it again. Yeah. What's something that you ate just to be polite? That is a fabulous story, Bartimus. Um, I'll probably spend it with my grandma. She died of cancer. And um, you know, I'll probably cook chicken noodle soup because I used to love eating that as a kid. So yeah. And so if you could spend two hours in the kitchen cooking with anybody who ever lived. Who would you choose? Christopher says he's going to be with grandma. Sniff. Nope. Oh, we skipped somebody. So sorry. Guys, it is time for us to vote, and we will pick our champion. Who is it going to be for this week's big vote? Mm. I know. I don't know what I did wrong. I am so sorry, Kitty. Gosh. There's a lot of like funkiness in today's show. I know. Yeah. I liked it. I can't decide. To, oh, I don't have to decide. Chocolate, right? It's going to be Kenda. So under protest, Kenda is our big winner for the week. <laughs> Congratulations, Kenda. So uh, that is it. We have gone through this entire week and that was food week. And now we are heading into a new week, which will start today or tonight, really at midnight. So what is next week all about, Trish? Do you know? I do. Next week is all about family. So we've got a bunch of family holidays coming up. Good Friday and Easter weekend. And it's the month of Ramadan. And 
We've got Passover coming. So we're talking all about families, family dynamics, why we love them. And we're going to share some very relatable habits that other fans' families have to our own. Well, I cannot wait. So uh, thanks a lot for everybody who watched, voted, and recorded this week. You guys are what the show is all about, and we definitely appreciate it. Thanks a lot for all the people who are in chat who are like zipping away and telling us what is on their mind. We really, really appreciate it. You guys know that it is not too late for you to answer any of these questions. Just go ahead and click the link in the chat, or why not subscribe? Because then we will send you the invitation and an announcement each day of the week. You can be the first person to answer each question of the day, and maybe you will be on the Thursday Big Show.